Let's do it. We're going to make several videos today because I have to travel because I am still on a secret mission, which I'm going to announce hopefully very, very soon. It is middle of February, 2023. Buy me a coffee if you enjoy the education and the work that I'm doing. If you'll notice, very few of my videos here have ads because of censorship and I don't make any money on YouTube. I make my money on Mushroom Voice in my private membership community, my store, or if you will be so kind enough to buy me a coffee, the link is either in the description or the first comment below. Let's talk about this. So I want to talk to you about expiration dates of a lot of different things. First is just the dried mushroom itself. Firstly, I wanna tell you, you do not need to cure your amanita for three months and drying it does not convert all the ibotenic acid to muscimol. I have other videos about that. Most of those are on amanitadreamer.net and you'll see the playlist that those are in. I cite the studies, I cite all the reasons, I show you why. Basic chemistry is that you need a fluid medium for your chemical reaction to happen and most of the time you need some level of heat. Very few reactions happen at room temperature. Also, a decarboxylation reaction is a very simple one to turn ibotenic acid into muscimol. It is the simplest. There are stages of different decarboxylation reactions. They start simple and they get complex. Technically, Amanita muscaria should decarb at room temperature and yet it does not. And we don't know why. And I'm asking, and I'm working with someone right now who's amazing at chemistry, very intelligent, profoundly gifted, and we are working on that. But so far, after four years, I still have not been able to figure out why a simple decarb reaction will not happen at room temperature with Amanita muscaria. As the heat is rising, the reaction is speeding up and yet you are quickly running out of moisture. So you can only convert a small amount of that ibo to muscimol before it's too dry for that reaction to continue. But we do have a study and this whole study is problematic. Not, not only is it in Japanese, but this is the study that I'm working from. There are some good data in here and some bad data in here. If you see anyone quoting anything from this study, there are a lot of questions that need to be asked about every piece of data in here. Some of it is completely irrelevant and unusable. They made a lot of mistakes in this. But there is a few key pieces, of, there are a few key pieces of data that we can use. And I wanna bring your attention to this table right here. This was in 1993, the change in ibotenic acid and muscimol contents in Amanita muscari during drying, storing, and cooking. Uh, food Hygienic Studies of Toxigenic, Basidia Mycota 3. Um, it is Sunoda. Sunoda headed up a lot of research in the 1990s. Um, they give you in English sort of their methods right here, but then everything else is in Japanese. What I want you to see is uh, someone posted this over on a website that I refuse to be a part of anymore that is a cesspool of bad information. I'm hoping maybe it's kind of cleared up lately and things are going better over there. Uh, but for a while, it was mostly just a lot of tripping cowboys that ganged up on me and decided that I am full of shit and don't know what I'm talking about. So when I see stuff like this posted over there and I watch them quote this study, they're not doing actual real science of looking and asking the right questions about why data is useful. For instance, this right here is completely useless and I could go into why, but there's it's such an important pieces of informa information missing here that you can't use that table. But look at this table. This one's valid and it's usable and it's good. And when we're looking at the changes over time of ibotenic acid and muscimol in dried amanita, there's still data missing, but let's look at this. See that drop off right there? See how it just sharply drops off? That means the concentrations of ibotenic acid and muscimol are dropping off. When are they dropping off, right? And so that the answer to that question is, ibotenic acid is pretty much the same up to two weeks, but then it starts to drop pretty sharply at 28 days, 74 days, and then right there, that is 140 days, three, six, nine, 12, that's like four and a half months. So, but what I want you to look at is it's not at zero. That's not zero, that's about, I don't know, 90 parts per million. They're measuring this in parts per million. That's not nothing. That's not bad, right? So somewhere around the five month mark, you're going to have a loss from like 180 to about 100. So you lose about 
I'd say 40% of the actives around the five month mark. Here's the problem when I, when I show you this, and here's what people are doing that are doing really bad interpretations. They're making assumptions based on today. So if they're storing them like this, they're assuming that's what's happening here. When they're reading this table up here, they're making assumptions about a dehydrator that was made like five years ago, even though this study was back in the 90s. They're assuming the way that it was stored. They're assuming how it was heated. They're assuming an amount of time. There's a lot of assumption going on, and that's what makes a lot of this not usable. But let's go on and talk about this one and say that that's valid information right there. Then that also means that muscimol stays steady for a whole lot longer because it's a much more stable molecule. See that? It doesn't even begin to drop off until around 80 days and then it bottoms out to nothing, but that's okay because what ibotenic acid you have left, it will convert into muscimol. So you don't also lose muscimol just because it's been that much time. Ibotenic, you've got ibo on board and then you've still got the, mus the muscimol that it'll turn into, right? The problem with this right here is they don't tell you how it was stored. It just says during storage, right? Well, I've been playing with all of this and experimenting with it for four years now. And what I have learned, what I have found, is two things matter more than light. Because I've got, you know, I've got dark jars. This is not one of them, but I have a lot of stuff stored in dark jars. And they talk a lot in different cultures about storing it in a dark room or in a dark place. I'm not saying sunlight can't change things. We'll talk about that later. But two more important factors are oxygen and moisture. A third factor is whether it is staying in its whole package or whether it's ground up into a powder. The reason why I tell you to always use these gaskets, and I have videos on drying, but they take them down. They're on amnitodreamer.net. Is because these things love water so much that if you don't have something with a gasket, they will suck the water up and become bendy, and that will start to break the actives down faster. I don't have studies on that. This is personal experimentation. The other thing is oxygen. If they are exposed to oxygen, you open this too many times, oxygen will come in and degrade it through oxidation. So those are my two things that I have learned by experimenting, leaving them out, exposed to the air, putting them in the dark, exposed to the air. I've run a lot of these experiments and then tested them, used them, made tea with them, whatever, pinched off a piece, ate it dry. This is what I've learned. Those will actually make them go bad pretty quickly Within, I would say, moisture, if these were not completely sealed with a gasket, a couple of months. If they're left out, completely left out to the air, a couple of weeks, and there won't be anything left. When you powder it, like I'm about to use this to make my smoke blends, and then it's going to go out, you know, into the world or whatever. But I don't do this until I'm ready to use it. Because when you look at these dried, when it dries, see how it's wrinkled up? What that is doing is creating a seal, a tight seal. The actives are right there with that color in the very top of the cap. It's sealing those actives in and helping to keep that sealed up and tight and closed off. But as soon as you grind it up, you have exposed all of these pieces to moisture and to the air. Even though they're stored like this, you've taken away their ability to be sealed up and they're going to start going bad quickly. So I will make these, I'll start working on them tonight. In a couple of days, they'll be sealed up, they'll be sold in the store, and they will go out to people. That's the Amanitas themselves. Let's talk about the shelf life of the oil. So when I make my oil extractions, I've experimented with them. I've taken my oils after they're done, they're in a clear jar. Um, I sell them to you when I send mine out in dark and opaque just to be sure, but also glass, just to be extra careful so we're not absorbing any plastics. But once you expose it again to the air and it's not refrigerated, it's just sitting at room temperature and it's just sitting out, I have found that my oils still stay good for about nine months, some of them about a year. I have some that I left out for like a year, year and a half, and I went to use them and they were just completely empty. So somewhere between nine months and a year and a half, I would say, is the shelf life of oil extractions. And then let's talk about the tea. 
and then raw milk soma, which is a full muscimol decarb. I have the recipe for this on my website, amityadreamer.net. Can't put it here. The shelf life of this is actually, well, actually both of them, they don't go bad, which you would think raw milk would go bad and smell really bad, you know, like a baby bottle that's been left out or something. And in my experience, it doesn't. It just gets less and less smell. So the way it smells right now, I just made this. It's very fresh. It's got layers of smell like bread and sort of like yeast and sort of like bacteria and sort of like mushroom and it just smells yummy. But over time, this will slowly just smell less and less and less until you can smell it and it won't have a smell at all. Two weeks, it's still good and active. At the two week mark, as you smell it and it smells less and less, it's losing its actives. And the same is true for the tea. Although every once in a while you may find that you see this thick stringy stuff down in the middle, that's probably more of the lactic, uh, lactobacillus bacteria that are just congregating around the sugars. That's not a big deal. They're not gonna make it go bad. If you added lemon to this, then all you're going to do is the sugars from the lemon are gonna push more decarb until you don't have a 50-50 anymore in here and you may take it and wonder why you just got sleepy or whatever. And then you may think, oh, well, it's losing its potency. Anything else that is bound up in like creams and lotions that are harder, that are also bound up into like cocoa butters and, and waxes and stuff like that. For me so far, a year, year and a half, and it's still good. That's just, all of this is just my personal experimentation and I'm just trying to be helpful trying to give you ideas stop curing them use them immediately here's how to rotate and here's what to know about the time of year if you are buying yours from anybody in europe and mostly from minnesota nice botanicals who is also sourcing them from europe most of the time then they came out of the ground in the fall right so around March is when you're going to start looking for them to start losing actives. And indeed you will see them starting to put them on sale. There are other places that they do fruit in the spring. Like I think Alaska and sometimes in Vancouver, down along the Pacific Northwest and along that coastline, Oregon, Northern California. But that's such a small, small amount. The bulk of the world is going to fruit in the fall. Australia gets their fruiting in our North American spring because it's their fall, but they can't, it's hard to get them out of there because they're not supposed to pick them and it's illegal there. So I can promise you that what you have was probably picked in the fall, which means definitely by the middle of the summer, they're going to be really weak. That just means if you make it regularly and you don't get anything from it, then you're going to probably need to double the amount that you're using and as the months wear on and get closer to August, you'll probably have to just keep adding. If I have any left in July, that's what I do. I start really dumping a lot in there. I'll double up on the oil. I'll double up on my tea just to try to get it back to its regular strength. So time of year is important and shelf life is important for when you're using your Amanitas and what you are and aren't getting. So if you want to talk about this with me, we have really fun Zooms in my community and you can talk to me and ask me questions over there. And we do dance parties and we do show and tell. And then we have different theme Zooms, like different people using this for medicine to treat ADD, ADHD. We talk about high dosing and trip stories and stuff like that. So that is at Mushroom Voice if you want to come and play with me over there. Meanwhile, I love you beautiful people. Bye.